Hello and welcome to the Bane Picks video for the Memphis Grizzlies against the Minnesota Timberwolves. I'm your host, Matthew Motto for Lives.com, joined here by my resident NBA expert, Jason Gilbo. And while a Grizzly may win this battle in the wild, it may be a different story on the court. So, Jason, who do you got on winning this game? Uh, we finally get a spread down to, you know, less than two. Memphis was heavily favored in the first two matches. Um, uh, Grizzlies go on the road in this one. I, I still think they're the better team. Um, kind of looking back, I think we overthought a little bit about game one, and game two, and kind of, you know, I, I think we know Memphis is a far better team than Minnesota. Like, Braxton had the stretch of saying Minnesota could challenge the Suns. They could if Booker's out for a while, but... Um, yeah. I, I don't think so. I There's a great uh, Twitter account um, page called Shot Quality. Um, I do recommend to follow. And they kind of post things that, you know, they run the simulations on, on basically on the shot quality of that game and post who would win that game, you know, X amount of percentage of the time. Um, Memphis would have won that first game like 70% of the time. It was just kind of a miraculous shooting performance by a lot of Minnesota. Um, and obviously they didn't get that in in game two. Um, and we saw a lot of the defense kind of really clamp down for Memphis. And I don't know if this is that first game is kind of now of a turning point, like, Hey, let's, let's get moving because we saw Memphis's bench really step up. Um, you know, Morant didn't even have, I mean, he obviously nearly triple double, but, um, you know, he wasn't, he didn't need to drop 40 for Memphis to score 124. And that's kind of dangerous. So, um, I worry a little bit about the Minnesota consistency on a game to game basis. As we saw, you know, towns just continues to kind of have these up and down games. Edwards shooting regressed a little bit. Russell's still shooting poorly. And I think that's going to continue in this defensive matchup. And I think Memphis is better coached as well. So I, I don't worry as much really about going on the road in this one. I think Memphis, they've just really shown all year that they could be a dominant game, dominant team, kind of no matter the situation and what's going on. And I like the fact that we're now kind of getting them at a lesser spread. So I still think Memphis is the favorite team here. Like Morant's in a good spot. Um, like to see him bounce back. I mean, he had that great game in game two. But I think overall, we now saw kind of Dylan Brooks and Desmond Bain and Jared Jackson pick up some of the pieces around. And I think if they're going to continue to play that well. Um, and I didn't even think they shot particularly well from three, and that's the scary part. So... I'm going with Memphis. I, I think they win this game even on the road. Um, I know Minnesota will be hyped game three, but I think this is going to be a spot where a lot of people back them. And I, I think Memphis is just simply the better team and win this game. I, I do think you're getting a slight discount on the Memphis Grizzly spread because of game one, because of the hype. But at the same time, uh, not that I even disagree with anything you're saying. It's just this game. I think I'm a little shook from last night. I feel like nothing really seemed or went the way I kind of expected it, even though we got two of the three games right. The the part that, I mean, the stat that you brought up about the first game, that kind of blows my mind considering I feel like how dominant the Timberwolves were. Um, So it's like, I would love to dive into that and see like really what goes into it. If it's like average shooter or they take like, each shot like individually like there's who's like, taking it there's like 90 components they use to yeah. go into it. it's it's wild and it's it's something i followed during the college basketball season and now he's started to do it for the nba playoffs and it's kind of like the same thing with the suns that other night like brendan ingram just was caught fire and usually he's not going to hit a majority of those shots most times and the suns actually should have won that game still so it's not an end-all be-all, obviously, yeah. but I think it was kind of an eye-opener of like, oh, Minnesota just absolutely kind of shot lights out from spots that maybe they were regressing, and obviously that regression hit pretty hard game two. Well, for over-under, uh, I think my best advice is not to bet the over-under, in my opinion. I just... 236, I think, is actually a pretty perfect spot. It, it could easily go over and can easily go over with just one of these teams playing well due to the pace of play. Um, at the same time, if you have a game like last game, it, it would be under. like, I know it sounds silly, but I think if you're going to pick a point total, I think the Grizzlies over 118 and a half is the best bet here. I think that's pretty, pretty solid. I think in most situations, whether the Timberwolves win, whether the Grizzlies win, 
the Grizzlies are scoring like 116 to 124, 126. So a majority of those outcomes are above 118 and a half. I think minus 110 is still value. Not touching the total total. I'm not touching the Timberwolves total because I truly think they have a range of 95 points to 140 points in this game, depending on, again, how hot they are. Um, so, yeah, that's the only somewhat value I see. And I think it's good enough to, to place a unit on. I don't think you're getting ripped off at minus 110 there. No, I'm with you. I, you know, I had this task the last game. It was like 242. Um, so that was kind of, I, I had an easier chance to go with the under and, yeah. and that hit because we just expected a little bit more of a defensive game and that's what we got. Um, I'd still, it, it's obviously scary because like you said, the possession of play is just, it, it's so insane. Like they could not really shoot particularly well and still get to these points. Um, and that's always kind of what you don't really want to be banking on a ton. Mm-hmm. Um, I'm with you. I think Memphis is, has the best chance to kind of really pop off tonight. Like that offense is just so deep and I like the bench unit against Minnesota's bench. So I think they have an edge there. Um, even though they're, they're kind of clearly looking at the under given it's minus 120, I think 118 is kind of a value. So I'm with you. Yeah. It's like, I think if it was 240 is kind of cut off for me where I would start thinking it's a value for an underplay. I think a value for an overplay would have been the cutoff like 228. So you literally had 236 smack in the middle. I was like, uh, eh. But I, yeah, the reason that I go with the Grizzlies is I just think there's multiple ways for them to get there, unlike any of the other over or unders, where it's like, like you just said, so many possessions, they could still shoot badly and hit 118, 119, 120. Um, anyway, let's move the player props. Your favorite one on the night. Um... I'm a little bummed. I mean, I, I went right to the assist with these teams just because they move the ball around so well. And, you know, Russell's over six and a half, minus 150. You got Brooks, minus 165. Beverly, minus 140. Bain, 160. I, I don't know. They, they've kind of really priced me out of a lot of props, I think, on this, unless you really want to just look at points. Because um, rebounds and, and assists are just completely gassed up. So, I think threes are intriguing if you want to kind of chase something here. I know Jaron Jackson got hot from three, uh, and you obviously you just need to make him at two. I, I don't know if I'm completely willing to go back there. If you're willing to eat a little bit of juice, I mean, Dylan Brooks over one and a half threes, minus 145 is certainly in play. I think it's probably more of a single-game parlay type like. I don't know if I'm betting that just straight. Um, yeah, I, I don't know. I honestly don't really have a ton here. Um, there's not a lot of great prices. I mean, you can shop around, but shop around the assists, I guess. I mean, I, I really do think Morant is going to be going to be a little bit more of a playmaker at times. So over seven and a half, if you can find a better number, um, I, I would probably look there. Yeah. So for me, I'm going right back to the well here. It lost last time, but I just feel very comfortable betting it in the series. And that's under one and a half threes for John Morant. Uh, he hit back-to-back threes, of course, in the game. But he's only shot a total of six in two games. He's only made two, and the only time he made two is he happened to just be feeling it, and he made them back-to-back. Like, it was a very specific situation. I re- honestly would bet under three and a half attempts from three from John Murray. I think you go back to two attempts, just hoping he doesn't go two for two. Because I'm with you. I think he's going to be more of a playmaker. If he's not playmaking, I think he's slashing towards the basket. There's there's really no reason for him to shoot a three. Again, unless he's just absolutely feeling it. And, you know, I got unlucky in that, what was it, like a five-second time span. And then he never even looks at the basket again from beyond the arc. So, uh, I think it's a value at plus 110. I think if you just bet it this entire series, it should win five out of, you know, let's say there's seven games, five out of seven times. Um, yeah, um, I think you, we were, we were online together and it was like literally just him in the third, like starting to feel it. And it was just Memphis was on such a roll in that third quarter, um, coming out of the gate and Morant just hit, he was like, all right, I'm just, you're going to give me this. I'm going to take back to back threes here. And he usually doesn't hit, like he's not a, the biggest three point shooter and he's really struggled against Minnesota. So yeah. I definitely would continue to bank on that and not let one game discourage anyone yeah i mean it's crazy throughout the season so 
He's two for four in that game. He's 0 for two in the first game. You go back to the 224 game, 0 for four. You go back to the 113 game, 0 for seven. You go even earlier in the season, 0 for three. And it was the first time they played Minnesota all the way back in November. You have to go when he last time he hit a three pointer against Minnesota in four games. Like he, it, it's just not the way that they a need to even play against Minnesota. And Minnesota hasn't been allowing it. So I just think it's going to be a good volume bet. You just keep you just keep going at it. Any other uh, ones you want to talk about? Um. Weirdly enough, I mean, we t- we've always talked blocks versus Memphis. Uh, Towns ended up did hitting his over one and a half, weirdly enough, when he was in foul trouble most of the game. That was basically the only prop he hit. Um, <laughs> I-, I don't know if I'm, I'm going to continue to go that route. Like, steals and blocks, I think, as we kind of see in the playoffs, have been a little bit more unpredictable. Um and I think a lot of that is because there's a couple teams that play a little bit more ISO heavy at times. So the ball movement's not as high, you know, there. Um, but I, this game is just going to, there's so many possessions, so many opportunities for, for steals and blocks. Um, I don't know. Um, I, I think towns might be a little bit intriguing, but because the value is still there, but that, that's kind of it for me, I guess. Yeah. Was he at uh, over plus one plus one thirty five? Oh yeah, yeah, for blocks. I'm throwing it on there. I just it's it's another one where I feel like it's almost like you should be going with it every game if you're deciding to do it in a series where, unless of course they they just absolutely destroy the odds. But you know, it's the same thing with the Marines that are used. Like if you're gonna give me Carl Anthony Towns against the way the Grizzlies play, you're gonna give me plus one thirty five to plus 160 every single game over one and a half. I'm just going to continue to take it because there's no rhyme or reason on why game two versus game four, he's going to hit it. It, Right. So you you just keep placing it each and every night. Definitely. Um, Other than that, I kind of like Anthony Edwards in this game to bounce back. Over 24 and a half is just a little, it's just like literally one point too high. I think if it's 23 and a half at minus 105, I'd do it. So I think I'm I'm good off the player props. There's probably some cool same game parlays we can make, but we're not gonna dive into that right on video. It'll take too long. Yeah. Yeah, this game's a good one for like single game parlays because I think feel like we know where at least a lot of the offense is coming from, where some of the other ones we've seen guys take kind of on and off approaches, but this, we know we're Morant. We know it's Edwards towns, you know, those guys. Yeah, exactly. This is, a, it's a perfect game to go in the same game. Parlay, go to Morant, go to Edwards, go to towns and basically take lower numbers at shorter odds, but combine them into a nice parlay that ends up with like plus 300. Um, that's what I would be doing. All right. So the bets we talked about, we got Memphis Grizzlies minus one and a half. We got over 118 and a half for the Grizzlies team total over one and a half threes for Dylan Brooks at minus 145 under, I think that was 135 when we initially put it in. So going even shorter under one and a half threes for John Morant plus 110 over one and a half blocks for Carl Anthony Towns at plus 135. Thank you guys for watching. As always, you can hit the subscribe and bell to get notified when these videos go up. If you like this one, drop a like. If you did not, a dislike. Comment down below your favorite bets, and we will see you for the next one very soon.